Bring us up to date on uh, global gold demand. Now, I mean, we always think of gold as jewelry, and I guess about half of gold uh, demand worldwide is jewelry. Uh, gold uh, jewelry demand, I know, slipped last year in the U.S.'s uh, biggest markets in India, in Turkey, and China. Uh, has it recovered at all? Yeah, look, um, jewelry demand typically is anywhere from a half to two thirds of final consumption in what I would describe as a typical year. 2020 with COVID, obviously not a typical year. Lockdowns, social distancing, all of the issues there meant that gold jewelry consumption fell to about a third of the total when it would more normally have been something closer to two-thirds. We, we saw the beginning, beginning of a recovery in the Q4 statistics for 2020. That recovery has continued. Consumer demand, led by gold jewelry, mostly going into the emerging markets, has done very, very well in the first three quarters of this year. And of course, we're just coming into, we had Diwali just last week. We're just coming into the big festival season in India, the wedding season in India. For the next six months, that is typically the seasonally strongest period for gold demand in India. Looking at the rest of the world, where the Chinese are gearing up for Chinese New Year, not just in mainland China, but in Chinese communities all across Asia and all across the world. And in the West, we're looking forward to Christmas and to New Year which are also gift-giving occasions. So I think we should be running into what is typically the strongest period for gold demand in terms of jewelry in the year for the next five to six months. And I think that's part of the reason why gold is where it is today, comfortably above that $1,800 level, which it's found very difficult to surmount uh, during the summer and into the fall. But here we are, winter time, gold's doing very, very well. And I wonder if we could put that full screen back up there, because, Will, what I found very interesting, and we've been looking at these for, for a long time, where the gold is, but only about 15 percent of the gold supply is held by individuals. We think of people who've got gold bars we, or gold coins or even ETFs, uh, which would include that, and individuals are only about 15 percent of that. Most of the gold in the world is either in the form of jewelry or in central bank reserves. I always think that's an important thing to remind you know, people about when they think the ETFs rule the world in terms of gold supply. They don't. Yeah, no, that's absolutely right. But the investor is an important marginal buyer. And so the level of central bank buying has been relatively constant for some time, as indeed has the demand from the jewelry sector. And so that, that sort of swing amount, if you will, um, is very much, I think, uh, relevant to the investor. And so in times where you get a lot of uh, investment demand for gold, that does have an important sway, I think, in factor in terms of the yeah. gold price. So I think I, I always view the, the investor as like the important marginal buyer here. Yeah. And I, I think what you're saying is not only is the important marginal buyer, he actually largely sets the price. It's the, it's the gold futures, of course, that really help set the price of gold. And it's those kinds of people who are involved in the futures market and, and buying things like the ETF that, that help set the price. So you're right. They're the price setters. And uh, now, will you run the Granite Shares uh, Gold Shares ETF, which also holds uh, physical gold like uh, George's GLD? What's your outlook for, for gold for next year? Well, I'm, I'm very positive on the outlook for gold um, for next year. And the reason is because of what's going on with the, the macro environment, and particularly inflation. You know, I think that, you know, the fact that we've held in around this 1800 level, we obviously had the tapering announcement last week. And those that expected the gold price to fall were surprised when it actually mounted a fairly significant rally. And I think that's in a way due to this still, you know, the dovishness coming out of central banks, um, obviously here in the United States, also in the UK, where there was an expectation by some that rates would rise. So policy remains dovish. And then, you know, inflation numbers, I don't think that these inflation numbers are as transitory as some might think in the market. I think the supply chain issues that we have around the world are not going to resolve themselves as quickly as some might think. Then we have real inflationary pressures that if they persist, for you know, long or the longer they persist, the more of a problem that causes, and the more people will look for inflation hedges. And there just aren't that many places to hide. And gold is one of those places that people have always gone to um, in times of stress. And I think that that is a reason for still believing that gold is going to be there next year if there's an inflation, an official acknowledgement that you know inflation is a problem. And, uh, you know, Will, I always, whenever I do a segment on gold, I always like to remind the viewers uh, that, like all physical gold funds, um, gold 
uh, it, all physical funds. Yeah, gold is considered a collectible for tax purposes. And could you just summarize, uh, teaching moment here, what should investors be aware of in terms of the tax consequences of gold? Yeah, that's a great question. So with a lot of ETFs, I think there's potentially a common misconception that every single ETF is taxed the same. Of course, the tax treatment of an ETF is largely based upon the underlying asset that the ETF owns. So in the case of gold, that's viewed as a collectible, and a collectible attracts a higher rate of tax, it's 28%, as opposed to, say, stocks or bonds, um, which are targeted at the long-term capital gain rate, which at the moment is quite a bit cheaper, but maybe, maybe about to go up, we'll see. <coughs> Um, but it's important. I think that the history around that is potentially if the IRS thinks you're wealthy enough to own gold or other assets like that, you can maybe pay a bit more tax. But apart from that, it's something to, to bear in mind.